Hello and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about some more news from the Ugligorsk power plant and from Pokrovsky to the north. Basically the only front with changes besides the kerosene front which I do intend to talk about not in this video but probably in some other video. Um, the only other front that's active at the moment is the Bahu front. So I'm just going to be going over the breaking news over the past 24 hours so what we're hearing is that the power plant itself over here it's basically been mopped up there's um video footage that i want to show everyone inside the plant and so basically we we, we know by now that may maybe there is um, some ukrainian resistance left there but for the most part yeah the plant is under their control now what I'm interested about is the situation here in Semihiria. We haven't really heard much about this town, but it will be important now that Ukraine, the 76th, uh, 72nd Brigade, has withdrawn from the power plant towards the town. We'll have to see if they put up a concerted a defense or if they continue to withdraw to Kadema. We haven't really heard about um, the situation in this town besides the fact that the reports of fighting within the town, but of course, no videos of it, nothing of the sort. And the other big news, which is a bit farther up to the north, is that Pokrovsky is now fully under Russian control. So I will change the color to the dark red color, and I'll also show that the entirety of the town is under Russian control. And this is pretty big because in the past, I said that the southern parts were taken by Russia or the, D D the DPR forces, but so there was still some resistance up in the northern parts because Pokrovsky is sort of this uh, stretched out town. It connects to the town Bakhmutske where there is um, fighting in the town now, which I'll, I'll talk about. So this area, you still had Ukrainians situated in this area. A few days ago, the Ukrainians were kicked out of this southern area over here, where they still had a presence. They had a presence in this area. So they were kicked out of there, but then they offered some stiff resistance in the northern parts of the town. But yeah, now it's been fully taken over by Russian DPR forces, which does open the way for uh, battles in Bakhmutske, which were reported. Um, th there was reports of very fierce fighting outside of Solidar. So what I'm, th what I'm thinking is, now that uh, Pokrovsky has been uh, taken, they're going to attack Bakhmutske, and then they'll have this opportunity to cross the road and attack Solidar from the south. Now, that could go in tandem with an attack from the north, but we haven't really seen any progress on that front. Now, I want to go and talk about some of the sources and look at some of the footage. So first of all, the Ukrainian accounts of the situation are sort of different. What they're saying is that the Ukrainian military repelled the Russian attacks near Berestove and Semihiria. Clashes near Pokrovsky ongoing. So... The fact that they are uh, talking about Semihiria does show that, yeah, the town is contested by now. And what they say about Berestove and Pokrovsky leads me to think that, yeah, there might have been clashes in the area pretty recently. But at least in the case of Pokrovsky, by now, I am pretty sure that the Ukrainians no longer have a presence in the town just because of the clashes that are going on to the north of Pokrovsky. And yeah, that's that's just the armed AFU reports. Of course, they are going to try to minimize the, the extent of their failure. So now I'm going to go on to some Russian sources because the Russian sources, they are far more specific, um, at least in this regard. And I can understand why, because it is positive news for the Russians. So, of course, they're going to go meticulously into detail about 
the events and show footage and such, and then Ukraine is just going to try to shove it under the rug. So here we have a r- report from Slavyangrad, and what they're saying is that the Wag- Wagner um, PMCs with the 6th uh, Cossack Regiment, they took the, the, the village Pokrovskoye, and yeah, the, it is true that it does open um, the gate, the gateways for an attack on Bakhmut itself. L- look at um, Pokrovsky, it's, it's over here, right? And then you have Bakhmut around here. And all of this is just open fields, which I guess you could have Ukrainian artillery um, attacking the forces that are advancing through there. But it also does make um, an advance very quick for Russia because they won't have to deal with any geographical issues. Um, I will show a topographic map of the area at the end of the video just to help us uh, understand the context of all of this. So let's see what else we're saying. In Bakhmut itself, Ukrainian units continue to prepare to defend the town by fortifying their positions and mining roads. Yes, yeah, so, so they're basically fortifying everything, and we also know that a lot of the outposts of Bakhmut have been they've been decimated over the past few days. I even talked about um, some um, reports from Rybar, and they were talking about all these Ukrainian positions and asphalt plants and stuff like that that were going to be targeted. So you do see the Ukrainians starting to dig in to th- their positions. Now, I don't want to get into the talk about the Uligorsk plant just yet, so I'm going to stop here and move on to this post over here. And I want to I want to show this report here. Uh Russian armed forces have talk, have taken Pokrovsky and it was done in tandem with the 6th Cossack regiment. And here we have this report that, that, that sort of um, backs up what I said, that the Ukrainians were in the northern part of the village. And now their, their goal is twofold towards the uh, Solidar and Bakhmut. And yeah, we, we have um, basically the same thing being said by military maps, which is a... Uh, it, it, I like how they show the solid red and then the, and they have the, in, they added in this dotted line just to sort of, uh, show the farthest extent of the Russian advance. Now, th- this map does show that all of Pokrovsky has been taken and that you have clashes in, uh, certain parts of Solidar, um, all barely uh, outside of Solidar, like you, you have it over here, over here. So you you are seeing um, Russian Russia inching very close to Solidar and to Bakhmut. Now, what they also said here is that the the Wagner group they have filmed the area of the Ulugorsk thermal power plant. So that basically confirms to everybody that it's under the Russians' control. So I'm going to show that video, but first here, here's a video of Prokrovsky. This is not actually in the town itself, whatever's left of it, to my knowledge, because look, it's just a road. It's just a, this random road. It could be anywhere, and then you just have trees all around. but. Uh, around here, that sort of does look like settlement, if if I'm not mistaken. So we we do know that they have at least um, provided some sort of footage, not from within the town, but I do expect Wagner to provide some video evidence um, in the future because they do this for every single minor town that they uh, took. They they did this for Novolohansk, so I do think we'll see something similar with Pokrovsky. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the power plant. And now I'm going to show the footage from Wagner. So look, this is the outside of the plant. And yeah, they, they, they were just showing their watch to prove that, yeah, it's, it's the 
26th of July. And look, look at how intact everything is in the plant. You'd expect after a month, a month of shelling that you didn't see much more extensive damage. There's basically nothing damaged. Everything seems like in place around here. So I, I was surprised by that. Maybe the Russians, they targeted the Ukrainian positions, not in the plant itself, but in the, maybe on the outside, right next to the plant. I don't know, because it, it is really surprising to see that it is intact. But that also is a good thing, because this plant is very important for the people in Svelodarsk and all the towns nearby. So, yeah, I, I'm happy about that. It also does show that, for the most part, the plant is under the Russian control. Maybe there is some resistance in parts of it. Here's another video. So this is from the other side of the reservoir. I think this is in uh, Svelodarsk. And you have the RT reporter. And he's... Okay, so you see this is the plant. This is the plant. Over here. So if it wasn't attacked directly, because you can see clearly it's still standing. You, you don't see any damage to the thing itself. There perhaps were some attacks around here or here from further inland on Ukrainian forces because I have been talking about this for a while about the incessant Ukraine um, Russian um, assaults and and artillery strikes on the area so yeah that that's it for footage but here's a announcement from the LPR cleaning of the territory of the Uligorsk Thermal power plant in Svelodarsk from remnants of the AFU continues. The key industrial facility of the region has been taken under control. So when when they say cleaning, maybe by now, um, that basically means just if there are POWs, just get, getting them settled in. If there's mines or any sort of Ukrainian booby traps, just um, making just skimming through to make sure none of that exists. But but yeah, I'm pretty certain that by now. It it is fully under the control given the footage, and here is the topographic map that I wanted to show. And take a look at all these trenches that Ukraine has set up around here, which is crazy. And you see a lot of them in the higher elevation area because that's where most of the fighting is going on. And the thing is, this really stunts the, the progress of the Russian um, offensive. Look, take, take a look here at the situation. All of this area in this uh, southern part of the map, it's been completely static for since almost the beginning of the war. And even these... Like minor towns around here, you're barely seeing any movement. I did adjust the map uh, previously just to, to show that Russia did make some incremental gains based on the fire maps. But yeah, you're, you're seeing that the Ukrainians are heavily dug in. And that's because they've been fortifying this area for eight years, as, a, as I've said before. So let's take a look at the elevation in Bakhmut itself. So if, if this is a uh, Toretsk, and then th this is these are the approaches to to the road that release the Bahamut. So you see, it's probably the lowest elevation, which is why you'd expect Russia to sort of try to advance along there, uh, especially in this area around here. And you've seen many strikes, especially in this area, just to clear the path for Russia to then attack Bahamut from the south. And you also see strikes around here, um, on on these on these um Ukrainian targets in the higher ground because as you advance along the road, you don't want to have your um troops being fired upon by the Ukrainian artillery or tanks or snipers or whatever. And you see, even um behind the front line, they have a lot of trenches that are um dug in. Because they are anticipating a major attack by the Russians on Bakhmut and its outskirts. Now, here's the plant itself, the, the power plant. And this map sort of is similar to what I have drawn. I would uh, 
admit though that my 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 map does uh it is sort of lenient towards the Russians in the fact uh in the sense that l look at um the situation in Kadema and Samigeria. I have all these open fields as under R Russian control, but it is also it's painted in like a different uh color, and then the DPR controlled, and that's just to sort of sort of show that the situation is fluid in the area. I don't exactly know if Russia does control these areas. If they do, then it would make the conquest of these two towns much uh quicker. Maybe they'll um have that in the future so so if it comes out that i'm wrong i'll just I'll alter the map but you do see that this sort of backs up what i was saying about um the situation in the area and you do have kadema and samiheria around here and then once those towns are taken yeah you, you have um an opportunity to flank the ukrainian forces in this area as well that are dug in, which is a uh, why you may you may see a Ukrainian withdrawal from these areas, uh, D Daka, Hatsobe, Chernevi, because all, all these areas have been very static. All, all this area has been incredibly, incredibly static, probably due to Ukrainian resistance in the area and them being dug in, but. Also, I want to look at the elevation for a second. It's not that bad, the elevation in the area. Look, it's around here. You see some more uh, higher elevation. But yeah, it's it's not the worst. That's not the real reason why. It's more so to do with the fact that Ukraine has a um, huge system of trenches around here. And um, yeah, that's basically it. We're just going to have to wait and see if... Russia focuses more on Bakhmut now instead of Seversk and um that then Slavyansk later on. Or or um may, maybe we'll see some increased fighting in Seversk because it really has died down. Ukraine has sort of shifted their strategy away from urban fighting to just fighting on these like open terrains and sort of uh coalescing their their um their units just to make sure that the defense is as efficient as possible and any retreat of theirs will be as efficient as possible because they really don't have many men to spare at the moment look look at look at this the losses of the afu today are at least 50 to 70 thousand killed a member of the russian hacker group told ria novosti on condition of anonymity so yeah it is anonymous so of course we can't verify this and he, um this account he says note that this is just armed forces and that doesn't include the national guard or the territorial defense units and that i would expect there to be a lot of uh casualties in the territorial defense units because these are the civilian conscripts they have the least amount of experience uh and they're just being thrown into the front line and they would be just mowed down by these more experienced russian soldiers so think about the actual amount of casualties if we take for granted the fact that this uh, uh, Russian hacker is to be believed, sure, he may be lying or maybe is the wrong in intel, but is it that um, unlikely for this to be true? Think of it. This um, th think, think about all the heavy clashes that have occurred since the beginning of the war, and then think about if it, it is likely that Ukraine would suffer such, a, uh, such high casualties. I do think that it, it is certainly possible. Maybe he's wrong. I don't know. But it's just uh, something you should keep in mind. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you later.